Hey everybody, welcome back. So we got a really cool email from one of our viewers uh, out in Australia. They're wondering how they can get over their fear of snakes. Now there's kind of a lot more to this question than you may think. Uh, you know, we've got a lot of folks from the channel here that have said that they've gotten over their fear of snakes just from watching the videos. But if you're actually looking at getting over your fear of them and handling them in person, uh, especially in the wild, I'm going to go ahead and read his message when we come back. And we're going to talk about some of the best ways to get over your fear of snakes when we come back on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. Now, it was really cool. Um, this particular fellow, you know, really complimentary to the channel, man. And I just wanted to say when you watch this, we definitely appreciate it. We appreciate all the support of you guys. Which reminds me, if you're not already subscribed to the channel, get down, get subscribed, click the notification bell so you guys can catch when we put new stuff out. Uh, but let me read his email real quick. And it's talking about um, how to keep and handle these animals without getting bitten. Um, well, you do some educational videos on these aspects, meaning, you know, how to handle these wild snakes without getting bitten. And could you please share which species would be better to begin with all the way up to venomous species? We have a lot of lapids out here in Australia. So, one thing about Australia, you do have to be really careful about what you pick up because a lot of stuff out there will give you a really bad day. Um, also, how do you calm fear? My first encounter with a wild snake freaked me out, so I'd like to learn how to manage my fear and rationalize it until I've conquered it and have confidence working with reptiles. Um, that is a, like I said, that is a really good email, really good question, and a lot of folks pose that same question to us. Um, and to say right up front, don't get over your fear of reptiles. <laughs> don't do it. Don't get confident with them. Uh, the reason why I say that is because if you're talking about reptiles in the wild and you're fearful of them, typically that means that you don't have a lot of experience or knowledge about the animals. So if it takes fear or just plain old common sense, uh, don't go out and try to experiment or try and learn handling techniques on your own with wild snakes. There's a lot of animals that are easily misconstrued. They may look like non-venomous species but actually be non or actually be venomous um, even out here like in north carolina copperheads are pretty predominant out here and we all learn to recognize copperheads from the hershey's kiss pattern when you look at them from the side or the hourglass pattern when we look at them from the top and a lot of people will lean on it okay yeah that's a copperhead i've got that well just like with our retics how we have different morphs different colors different patterns things like that we're finding copperheads out here that have elongated marks, no marks at all, almost a solid color, some of them with stripes down them. Uh, so there's some morphs on that too. So you can't look at it and say, oh, okay, well, I don't see the Hershey's Kiss and I don't see the hourglass, so it's not a copperhead, so it's safe to pick up. Um, so that's kind of the first thing I would say is just make sure that you're not experimenting on your own. The best way to overcome your fear of snakes really is to find somebody to mentor you. Um, find some, and not just anybody, you gotta make sure that you're finding somebody who is, is really knowledgeable about the different species, uh, who has a collection that they're willing to let you interact with, and just really start from the basics, start from square one. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and get this, this one out. So animals like this, like this Florida king snake right here, are a really good example of an animal that's that's great for um, you know letting you get over your fear of snakes a little bit. They're perfectly safe. If they do bite you for any reason, it's not gonna you know it's not gonna be significant at all. Little head, little teeth, is not bad at all. But <clears throat> when you start talking about you know even smaller snakes in the wild, you can find coral snakes that are a fraction of her size that um, can really put a hurting on you. So in addition to starting to handle with the, with the smaller, safer snakes like this, you wanna spend a lot of time studying and learning their traits, 
learning how to recognize them, you know, going out, practicing, you know, you look for them from a distance, you know, and just kind of see how difficult it can be sometimes to recognize and differentiate between some of the species. Um, out here, you'll get, you know, water snakes that get misconstrued as venomous snakes and things like that. Um, unfortunately, what ends up happening most times is they end up just killing them because they think they're dangerous and they're not. So, so those are the first two points is just getting an animal, getting used to handling the animals, and then starting to study about the, uh, the different characteristics of the species that you're going to be finding in your area. And study up, you know, once, once you start learning everything about all the stuff that's local to you, start learning about everything else too because it's not uncommon that sometimes you may run across a, um, an escaped pet or something like that. You know, just like we had out here in North Carolina a few years ago, there was a cobra that, it is, that had escaped. And if somebody had walked up to it thinking, oh, there's no cobras in North Carolina. This can't be a cobra. This is like a banded water snake or something. If they would have picked it up, they would have had a bad day. Um, so, you know, it's, it's really important, of course, to learn your local species. But start learning about everything else, too, because you never know when you may run across something like that. So, isn't that right? You don't want to get confused for a cobra, do you? <laughs> He's such a sweet animal. Now, first getting started, one thing that will help you a lot is um, once you find that mentor to start working with, you know, hopefully they've got a pretty good sized collection. And, you know, if they breed snakes and they've got hatchlings and stuff like that, one of the biggest things people are afraid of when it comes to snakes is getting bit. So, you know, much like when I was doing the series on the Sri Lankan python, um, if you guys caught that, if you didn't, I'll put it in the end screen so you guys can check that out. But, you know, just like with him, he was so terrified of me, of people in general, that as soon as I picked him out, he just started biting and biting and biting. And the first couple videos that I did with him, I got bit 20 times easily. But I, I think in a lot of ways, if you find somebody that has some animals that he's working to socialize that are like that, even if they got some snippy hatchlings, you can get in there, you can mess with them, you can get tagged a few times so that you can feel what it feels like to get bitten by a little snake. And you can start to dispel that fear a little bit saying, oh, okay, yeah, it wasn't that bad. I didn't even hardly feel that. Um, because, I mean, that's the biggest thing that most people are afraid of. A lot of snakes going to bite me. Uh, so, you know, once you get used to working with them a little bit, you get used to working with some that will tag you. Now, don't do this with, you know, if you've got somebody that raises boa constrictors or retics or something like that, you don't want to go out and get yourself bit by a 8 foot, 10 foot, 18 foot retic or a berm or something. Because uh, those, those hurt. Uh, those are bites that we want to avoid. But, um, you know, working with those larger snakes too, it does kind of help put things into perspective. Because a lot of people will see my 7 foot boa come out. And they're like, oh my god, that's such a huge snake. And they're so freaked out by it and all that stuff. And then all of a sudden the 16 foot retic comes out and you're like, Wow, okay. And then they go over to the boa and they're like, oh, okay, well, that's not that bad. Um, so that kind of translates over to, you know, if you're out in the woods and if you've been handling 12, 14, 18 foot snakes and stuff like that, when you see that little six foot black snake running across, you know, running across the yard or whatnot, um, it's not going to seem as daunting, you know. Everybody pretty much that's called me and said, hey man, I got this huge snake over here. Can you come get rid of it for me? You, know, you show up and it's like five or six feet long and you're like, that's not a huge snake. And I'm like, man, that's big. That's the biggest one I've ever seen. So a lot of this stuff is relative. It's really subjective. And, and when you understand that and you kind of start exposing yourself to more animals, uh, you're going to slowly start to get over that fear. Um, probably pretty quickly get over that fear. But... <clears throat> In regards to the question about how to get comfortable with venomous, um, the immediate answer to that is don't. Um, even keepers that have kept for 10, 20 years, a lot of them never let themselves get comfortable working with venomous snakes because it can be a life or death scenario. Um, you can be confident working with your animals. It's just like with the big retics. Um, when we're working with those, we've got to be confident with them. We've got to handle them confidently. We've got to support them, all this other stuff. But we've still got to be cautious. We've still got to 
pay attention to them. We've got to understand what their frame of mind is, make sure that they're not actively wanting to eat, um, you know, the tap training and all this other stuff and reading their behaviors and being cautious, or being cautious rather, and then handling them confidently and building that trust with them. Um, you know, it's the same thing with venomous. You've got to be confident with what you're doing. You've just got to have a heightened level of caution with them. Um, and really, really, really don't even think of um, working with venomous until you've had a chance to mentor with somebody who does. And, you know, don't just go to the first person that you know that keeps snakes and say, hey, man, teach me. Because if you don't have the experience to know whether they're teaching you right or not, you could be doing yourself more harm than good. You'd be going to that person and that person could be teaching you all the wrong stuff. Um, and then you go out and you're, you got this newfound confidence about snakes, you go out and you get yourself bit. Try to ask around, find a few people you can casually talk with, get, a different, get different perspectives from people and stuff like that. And you've really got to kind of gauge who the best people are to help you. Um, yeah, that's, that's the best I can say on that. You just can't. I don't recommend anybody going into this stuff just of their own accord without having somebody to mentor them. Uh, simply because you can get yourself hurt with it. You know, if you're going out in the wild looking for venomous animals and stuff like that, you really, really need to know what you're doing. Uh, but it all comes with time and it all comes with handling and so forth. Um, you know, the reason why I handle my animals as confidently as I do is because I've handled a lot of really large, really um, defensive uh, bordering on aggressive, uh, bordering on terrified of people, and as soon as I see you, I want to bite you. So the whole point to today is really, you know, it's really cool for folks that want to learn and they want to get over their fear and want to start working with the animals. It's awesome. You'll definitely love it. I love it. Nothing better than coming down here and working with my animals. Uh, you've just got to kind of crawl into it. Uh, you know, finding videos on YouTube, watching people interact with them and stuff like that. It can all help. Uh, not not everything out there is good. Not everything out there is bad. Again, you just got to kind of weed through, and um, you know, take everything in, and then kind of make your own decisions on. Well, this person seems safe. This person seems like they know what they're doing. This person seems like they're just trying to get attention. And I know if I did that, I'd probably get bit. Um, you know, I'm not going to go down and mention names and stuff like that, but. And if you see somebody yelling and screaming when they're handling their snakes or jumping around and all this other stuff, chances are that's probably not how you want to approach it as a beginner. Um, so we'll leave that one at that. So yeah, I mean, just like anything else, find somebody to help you get started. You know, we had an old saying in the military, slow is smooth and smooth is fast, which means you walk through it, you go slow, you don't get in a big hurry, make sure that you get everything right. And as you repeat everything, you'll naturally get faster, you'll naturally get better, uh, you'll naturally be able to do things that you couldn't do before. Um, such as going out and handling snakes. And if venomous is something that you want to work with, outstanding. Just make sure you have somebody that knows what they're doing to teach you really well first. Um, and as far as the other things, the constrictors and stuff like that, they can be a lot of fun to work with. I think they're a lot more fun to work with than venomous because I don't have to worry about any of my animals um, sending me to the hospital anytime soon. So, so I just wanted to put a quick response out to that. I'm going to go ahead and link again the Sri Lankan series in the end screen right here. Uh, you know, as you watch that, you'll start to see kind of how insignificant these bites are and stuff like that, which is the biggest hurdle for a lot of people to get over. I'll put in the series on the reticulated python where we kind of go from start to finish the whole thing where you can kind of see how that works and as you're going if you've got any specific questions or anything like that by all means hit me up if i don't have the answer to it i've got a lot of friends in the reptile industry who are very knowledgeable and i know i can find you the answer to it or direct you to somebody that can give you a better answer than i can so again guys you have an outstanding week i hope you had a great holidays get down get subscribed to the channel Thank you to our Patreon supporters. If you want to jump on there, the link to our Patreon is always down in the description. Uh, we're making some big strides. We're going to be making a lot more big strides as the months progress here. So uh, we're really excited about it. And I look forward to seeing you guys next time on Intrepid Exotics.